All right, ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome. It's a pleasure for me to welcome here today. Uh, we have a great panel ahead of us. Um, it was very, very difficult to get all of these three guys together because these guys are insanely successful, but uh, we are very lucky today to have three of the pioneers of the industry. And um, I'm, I'm really happy to be here today. So uh, what we're gonna discuss today is the emergence of video game in Africa, the video game industry in Africa. When we look at the numbers, uh, 150, 170 billion dollars. I mean, uh, the, the numbers are just insane. Uh, people look at it and say, okay, at some point, Africa, which has about 1.3 billion people, uh, will come into play and will definitely become a champion. But how is that going to happen? Uh, who are some of the people who are the movers and shakers of the industry? And how is this going to evolve? So today, we're going to talk about the past. We're going to talk about the present, and we're also going to talk about the perspectives of the industry. Uh, guys, thanks again for being here today. So let's let's just go you know, around the table, and uh, I want you guys to introduce yourselves and tell us where you're coming from. I mean, uh, looking at the gaming video game industry, you know, you guys started a while back. How did you start, and how was it in the back? Let's let's start let's start with uh, with Aram. Yeah, um, Sadiq, uh, um, thanks thanks for for the wonderful introduction. And um, I must still put on the record that you are the bigger man. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so, um, my name is Iram Tawia, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Letty Arts, um, which is uh, one of the pioneers of um, video game uh, the, the video game industry in Africa. We are in Ghana and Kenya. Uh, my co-founder is Wesley Kirinya. He's also another pioneer. And um, I think uh, we put ourselves as pioneers um, with um, my other colleagues here because we started around, I think, full-time video game development around 2009 officially. But wow. way back from my childhood, um, I think I've loved video games since I was in nursery school, growing up, comics and all that. So I started developing games in junior high school because I wanted to make video games for my comics. I used to draw comics. My dad was an art professor. So in primary school, I used to write my stories and force him to illustrate. So he was my first illustrator. And in junior high school, I got a friend who together we built comics. So because of my love for superheroes, Green Lantern, Superman, I, want, I had those comic books. I saw that they advertised Super Nintendo, and I carry all these games within those comics. So I wanted to have these advertisements of games in my comics. And that's how come I started um, building um, um, video games. And uh, fast forward to now, um, we are still making games and comics, which is a childhood passion. Mm -hmm. So we are just living the passion, pushing in and growing a whole new industry. But technically, Letty Arts, um, 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 takes this particular passion, comics and games, because they move hand in hand and they push the same industry, um, building superheroes out of African history and folklore, because Africa has a lot of history that needs to be digitized. And we believe that games are the only great way to preserve culture for the next hundred years or next generation. And also, since we also came from a gaming background and an artistic background, uh, we are able to absorb better. I learned everything about the Nordic god Thor because I saw Thor as part of the Avengers, right? So if we are able to push Shaka Zulu or um, Yasantua in Kuma, all these big um, African guys in that format as part of a group called Africa's Legends, then we can craft new us for the future, right? And preserve culture in a cool way and sell African stories globally. So that is the mission of Letty Arts. And through that, we believe games enable other industries, they bring other opportunities into a continent and bringing arts and science together to create other opportunities, other job sectors um, for the populace. And that is why Letty Arts has been built that is our vision, and together I know we can make this a reality to create a whole new industry for Africa. So wow. that's, that's our mission. 
that's how that's why i call him big boss <laughs> now, now, <laughs> let, 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 let's let's now move to the guru mr obi mr obi tell us tell us tell us <laughs> yeah hi um my name is hugo um from malia games in lagos nigeria so we started back in 2012 um to build um casual african inspired games for mobile um so my inspiration was mainly um, more around the entertainment possibilities, the, the inter- entertainment and the commercial possibilities um, of this form of digital content. Um, I have a background in economics and business. Uh, you know, I, I worked in finance for a little bit um, and, you know, ventured into game development because you know, there are huge numbers um, for this type of content. You know, back in, back in 2010, when we started seeing smartphone penetrations, you know, smartphone created a, a new form of media con- consumption. Um, and obviously, with consumption comes commercial business opportunities. Um, and, and this is a trend that we've been looking at. You know, so in Nigeria, for instance, we have roughly about 200 million people. In Africa, we have over a billion you know, when you look at the percentages in terms of the number of people who have smartphones and then the types of content that they consume on their smartphones, this is what we, you know, this, this is what drives uh, what we do. So getting our content to end consumers, building games that people can relate with um, and leveraging our location, our position in Africa to, um, you know, to, 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 to kind of like, build consumer products um, for this marketplace. Um, as a game developer, obviously, you know, you can build your game for a global audience. And, and um, Iram touched on the cultural and historic um, values that are, you know, like embed- embedded within some of these games that are designed. Um, the challenge that you have as a, as, a, as a content creator is trying to communicate a culture or a history that you don't fully understand that you're not present in uh, can be quite difficult. So there could be misrepresentation. Um, and I think Alan touched on this during his keynote address. Uh, so we as Africans being present in Africa and understanding the African market are actually best positioned to create the best form of content. Um, we've seen this trend happen in, in, in movies uh, in Nigeria specifically with Nollywood We've seen this happen with music, and I'm sure uh, when, when Walid speaks, he would also touch on you know, some of those cultural significance um, happening within their different regions. So creating an industry uh, or having an industry that can create content for the local market is actually extremely important. It's, it's a strategic value. It's a strong value add, um, and it creates options for the, for the consumers. Uh, so this is this is this is the motivation for us. This is what we're trying to drive at, and we obviously are, are leveraging the best tools. Um, we're leveraging the best technologies. Uh, we're leveraging the best processes to target our product. Firstly, for people around our geography, and then subsequently, we can then try to export that to the to the world and 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 you know like tap into the global market. So that's kind of like that's where we sit. Wow. Wow. That's great. Walid, my friend, <laughs> tell us about your long history. Because <laughs> Walid has done so many things that... <laughs> Please tell us. I'm trying to make it quite short. Yes. Um, yeah. I mean, we've, we're, I've been in video games since, I mean, I remember. Um, but uh, in a professional way, uh, we started actually not developing games. I started organizing esport tournaments, and that was back in 2004. I was a student, uh, first year in, a, in university, uh, and uh, we created perhaps the first startup in esports in, in the whole region. Even in Europe and the US, when you say at that time, hey, we are doing esport tournaments, people say, what? Well, this is crazy. <laughs> you guys are fools. And uh, what, what is this? I mean, what is esports? It's, we only know sports. So, and, and, uh, we went quite successful, actually. We started in Tunisia, uh, and then we expanded. We also got a lot of servers online. So with the, for Counter-Strike, for Warcraft 2, we tried also to get in touch with Blizzard, etc., to have this uh, regional community. Um, 
And then we quickly expanded to Europe and to the US. So we, we got five years. It was, it was amazing and super, super exciting. I, I, I never got a normal, let's say, student life. Uh, I was uh, studying and, and then working and sleeping in the office and traveling. And, and imagine calling your, your, uh, your professor saying, hey, sorry, I have a business travel. I cannot pass the exam. And the guy is saying, what? What are you telling? <laughs> um, that, that was quite, quite, quite exciting. Let's call it like this. But the year of my graduation, everything stopped. Actually, I was expecting graduation to move to the next level because actually, we were organizing lots of events around games that we did not have the ownership. Uh, and at that time, I heard the day click. I said, okay. Uh, we, uh, the real value is, is in the content creation and in the game creation. I am engineer by training, so by, by, by curriculum. And, uh, and uh, so, uh, yeah, I, I, I spent two years trying to find the people that would like to, to build games. In 2009, 2011, it's not like today. Today, you just go anywhere in the internet and find nice tutorials and things to build games. 2009, that was quite something, uh, especially we were under censorship in Tunisia. So even YouTube wasn't, uh, wasn't available. So we had to use uh, some kind of uh, <laughs> routes to, to, to access to, to the content. But uh, it was, so at that time, Digital Mania was born, 2011, with the vision of making games, casual games for uh, the competitive world. So we wanted to see normal people not not hardcore players, so casual people playing games at a high level in competition. Of course, uh, being successful organizing events doesn't mean you are good developing games. So it took us a lot of time to learn, to know, to 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 have the the, the magic recipe, or at least to start to getting really close to it. Uh, and so we did a lot of things. We did games for advert games. So uh, and, and which is uh, fun that perhaps we are more known with the advertisement agencies than with the video game studios or in the video game world. Uh, we've been super successful. And today we have a hit uh, with a, a game for business and for team buildings. So it's, it's a serious game. Uh, it's a business game made for team buildings and very precise and specific uh, sessions. Uh, and it's a worldwide hit. It's been played by all the big names, Google, Apple, KPMG, whatever in the world. Um, and uh, so we did 125 games in uh, seven years. And then Digital Mania became a Frankenstein, meaning that mastering the video game engine, you're actually able to do anything. You can do animation, you can do games, you can do apps, you can do everything. Uh, and so I, 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 I just decided to stop, but my board said, no, what? No, no, don't stop, do whatever you want to do. And uh, that's the, at that time, 2018, we decided to go back to the first vision, which is making games that casual people can go competitive. And that's why now we are working on the Warshmallows. Wow. This, this is just amazing. I mean, for all the people that are listening to us today, I think it's just uh, that, that, that shows you that all of these different individuals went, uh, you know, started a long time ago and they're still in the industry. And that's great because that means that, um, you know, we're moving forward and there's a lot of things that are going to happen in the future. Guys, I, I want you guys now to tell me a little bit more about your perspectives in terms of, uh, I mean, not, not, not the perspective yet. I want you guys to tell me a little bit more about what are some of the main differences that you see between the African markets and let's say European markets or US market or Asian market? And what are, where, I mean, where are the gaps that we need to fill as, you know, industry, um, you know, industry professionals? So, so let me, let me start with, with, with Hugo. Yeah, sorry. Um, so I think in my, in my observation, I think I'll just focus on a single area, data. So, um, I, I feel like the, the European companies or the American companies or the Western companies are more data centric, right? They focus on data in a way that I think that we are just starting to realize that a lot of the decisions that you make with the games are data driven. Um, so for instance, you know, um, typically when we start building out content, we spend maybe the best part of three months developing a month testing and then we release it to market, right? Um, most of our compatriots would have done like fast iterations 
in the first like two or three weeks release the product to the market and actually focus on specific metrics like you know your d1 d7 retention um you know your cpi cost you know your roas and use that to determine if this is a project that they should continue to develop or if they should take it and move on to something else um so building data into the product development or the product design or into the company development, I think is kind of like what we are starting to do now. Um, that maybe like 12 months ago, you know, we don't understand what it means. Um, and there's a, a lot of like advanced analytics tools um, that a lot of like, you know, like most of these game development studios um, have access to and use to make um, design decisions, right? Uh, so that for me, is a key difference or well, that particular area is one that I've actually observed and we are starting to learn. I mean, obviously some of these studios have years of experience. Um, they hire people from different sectors and they've been able to leverage some of the, um, some of the successes in other areas and apply them to gaming. Um, and we are just kind of like figuring our way through um, as we go along. Um, but you know, like th this, this I think would hopefully help us become a little bit more competitive. Wow. And you, you touched on something that's very interesting is data. And, and that maybe leads to, a, to another question that I would ask uh, Walid. In terms of approach, do you think African game developers or African game studios, because they're not just developers, African game studios have the right approach in the way they develop their games? For you, there's been uh, doing a lot of things in Tunisia, but also in, 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 you know, in Europe. What's your feeling on that? I think that it, uh, I agree with you, Go, about the data and, and the accessibility for the data. The issue is we, we, it's, it's, we don't have a unified market in Africa. So uh, if you compare it to Europe, if you, you just, when you see how people uh, um, want to address the European markets, when you talk about it, it's, it's a one market because mm -hmm. you publish in France, you have a German, Finnish, wherever everybody can play. If I publish in Tunisia, mm -hmm. only Tunisian will be able to play. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, even if I publish on, on Google Play, or, or, or I'm not sure that all the countries will be able to, to even, I'm not sure that they'll be able to monetize. And this is today the biggest challenge that we have. Uh, and, and we've been working a lot on the B2B market, uh, not because we like working on the B2B, but it was some kind of obligation that we got if we wanted just to stay alive and continue doing what we want to do uh, from where we are, of course, from Tunisia and, and all this. So we need to better understand the market. I'm not sure that the uh, co consumer market is one unified market. I'm sure, definitely not. Uh, perhaps the B2B market can be uh, something good. I'm all the time advocating uh, about the B2B market because a lot of studios today see are seeing it some kind of... Uh, um, shame, perhaps not working, <laughs> working on games for companies, etc. But believe me, if we are still here and we have all the expertise that we have, and in the same time we are not doing websites or not doing apps or, or whatever CRM things, we're still doing games and with the whole process of game creation and the challenge still the same. Um, but in the same time. We, you need money to, to, to come to the, to the studio. You need to build uh, processes. You need to build skills around this. So uh, understanding the market, it's fine. Uh, dreaming of being super successful with the consumers is amazing. Everybody is dreaming about this. But also you need to understand where are you, from where you are doing the games and what are the possibilities that you have. Being super sure that being in Africa, making games is not like being in the US or, or, or in Europe or something else because we don't have the same tools. Wow. Uh, Aram, um, I mean, while you just talked about something that's very important is markets. Today, we are on a topic of the emergence of the video game industry in Africa. So I think a lot of people, especially the ones who are not living in Africa, wonder whether there's a market in Africa or not. What's your take on that? And how do you think it's possible for anybody, whether local or outside people who are interested in the market, to monetize uh, the games or the productions that they make? Yes, um, I think Hugo and Walid have said all the right things um, and um, highlighted all the challenges as well. But one of the things that I would mention before I dive into your question is that, um, you know, Africa is in blocks as well. We have the North. We have the south so 
the south has a lot of white influence the north is close to europe so you are able to at least have certain relationship with europe as well. and then we have the sub region which is us like the mm -hmm. sub sahara region um which also has a lot of different dynamics but there are some major blocks that cut across as walid mentioned in terms of monetization of the game industry but no game has made money yet we are all trying to now <laughs> unlock that bit but what actually qualifies as revenue for a game company is the game that we make for clients b2b and as i speak we are deploying a game for a client as well right and that's what keeps the company going and that's the business model that i think hugo walid and i would confirm that it's a good business model for africa in terms of financing and pro um and and um and um, um progressing in the video game industry we won't do CRMs, we won't do banking apps, though we though you have the competence, we make games. So so long as you are making a game for a client and getting paid, you are happy in terms of um, it's driving the gaming industry forward. So in terms of market, that is a market. B2B is a proven market on the continent. Whether the clients have will pay the right monies for the games, we are still yet to get there because the market is very new and you are even the established way of making money in the gaming industry here also needs to be iterated, right? You need to now start cycling the client. So a client may sacrifice a billboard budget and make a game. And that billboard budget might not make a game might, like, might not pay for all the game, but you can take that and make something. The next time the client will take data and increase that budget and probably give you three billboard budgets or this time maybe <laughs> a TV ad and give that budget to you as a game. So we are trying to now brainwash the clients on the continent that games are the best way to deploy stuff and get data and see what is happening. Like there's a game we are launching right now towards our election. And it's the Firebase and the Google Analytics, which I'm studying right now to see <laughs> how many people are clicking this, how many people are reaching this level and then tweaking accordingly, right? So that is how gaming is on Africa right now, mm -hmm. right? We've not gotten to the point where we are just going to have fun, make a Mortal Kombat game and beat each other to death and make fun. <laughs> Every game now has to make sense on the continent. So that is the, that's the tier. In terms of the other side of consumer market, there's a gap. I think one of your questions was, what gap should we fill? Look, Africa is, this COVID has shown a lot of gap, knowledge gap. Even the usage of technology, people don't, even know how to use Microsoft Word. Like last time, my one of my cousins who is a lecturer in a school, in a university here, said students send him assignments by copying the body of a text in the subject area and clicking send. Right? Like there is there is a knowledge gap, like even the usage of technology. People don't know how to use the tools even that we think they have, the phones. So when you make a game, the person doesn't even know how to subscribe for maybe something. How are they going to pay for your game or even understand in-app currency that they are going to use to build their characters and, and, and pay for the character and build the character. So there is that cultural disconnect, which we as game developers or game um, first movers of the industry, we have to invest in changing the culture. Like, building that cultural audience, then taking a subset of that audience and selling games to them, taking a subset of that audience again, and probably a bit of them will know how to pay, then taking a subset of that again. So we are crafting everything from scratch. So if an investor wants to come into Africa, these are the things they need to be prepared for. You know, you, it's a potential market. We are all living according to potential market. Every time I wake up and I see the young population and COVID is not killing us that much and <laughs> people are strong <laughs> and like it builds the hope. 
There is the hope. Where is the hope, Eram? The hope got lost into translation. You know, I, I think for for those that are watching, this is the reality. You know, of a game developer on a regular basis. You know, having issues with internet and but it, but, but let me let me come back to you, Walid. Uh, you know, until we we, we get Eram back, uh, you touch on on several very key and interesting uh, points, uh, and I think one of them was impact. What is your take on the kind of impact that African-made video games should have on the local consumers, but as well as in the world? Sorry, my lights went off. So Ah, we have him back. We have him back. That is, I, Af I, that is Africa for you. You need to <laughs> these challenges. So it's all dark here. You can't see anything. You know, I'm, I'm all dark. Wow, it's it's okay, yeah. it's okay. It, it looks a little bit like your game, you know. There's a game that you have where you know you see the the superheroes, you know. That's what it is. <laughs> I'm in the right now, so you can only see my dark face. It's All okay, right. it's okay. Okay, so proceed. So I'm um, just ending it there. Then that is the challenge in Africa, right? There's a market, but potential market, and these are the challenges that we first movers are are tackling. So when you come in. You need to join us to move it forward. Wow, well, I, 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 um, Walid, um, uh, when when Aaron uh, was offline, um, I think my question was around: What kind of impact do you think video games should have on the local, you know, consumers, but as well as in the world? Uh, on. Actually, we, we, we are coming from countries that all the time have been exposed to, to content coming from, from Europe, from US, even from Asia lately. Uh, a lot of Japanese content and South uh, Asian uh, content coming. So uh, everybody is quite eager of, of seeing things. So I, I remember in, in 2012, we did this game with a small robot. It, it, just in Tunisia, during Ramadan, Ramadan people consume a lot of, uh, of content because it's, uh, it's in, in the mood of that month. And, uh, and, uh, 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 and the people went just crazy because finally a game where a small robot, it was a runner, very simple one. He was talking in Tunisian, not even Arabic, because of course there is differences, uh, you know, in the Arab world, there is a lot of dialects and people just went crazy about the game because the, the character was speaking Tunisian so people need to recognize themselves in the type of content this is why today people talk about translation or perhaps localization and I would like to add deep culturalization of the game so the background that you are seeing behind me which is something that been inspired from Tunisia in the game Wash Matters that we are doing made actually the Tunisian very proud of the game. Even for now, it's not accessible, but they've been sharing it. We tried also to make it for Morocco, for Malta, you know, all those countries that are not really used to have their own culture exposed. So uh, on the local aspect, the people will be very engaged, of course, uh, and perhaps discovering some aspects of their own culture through the, through the game. But on, a, on an international aspect, of, I, I, I believe that we all know uh, the, the small breads, you know, round breads from the Japanese culture. We, we, uh, we understood the, the bowl, the rices and the sushi. And I mean, all the US uh, culture came through uh, movies and video games. So uh, this is very important. So if tomorrow we are going to have a game that is emerging from the African or any, any other country, I mean, but uh, with, with the deep cultural aspect and promotional, uh, but in the same time, without without being like um, uh, uh, old old fashioned, you know, it needs to be modern. It needs to be Wakanda style. You ah, see all this exactly. movement coming. Like we are all proud of seeing the new continent coming down, and not just talking about the old stuff. No, it's it's it's. A uh, who talk about who talked about a uh, 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 future Africanism? I think, and this is a whole movement happening today. Is that? All the youth are seeing Africa in 2050 or in 2070. And games today are able to show the vision that all the African people have about their, their community and, and, yeah, and society. Wow. I, I think you touch on something that's very important is the, the future. So, so Hugo, maybe can you tell us, let's fast forward 10 years or maybe 20 years. Where is the video game industry going to be? 
I don't know that I can reach 20 years. Um, <laughs> that's just way, like, way too far. Uh, I, you know, considering what's happened this year, right? You know, I, I think anybody's all better off. Mm -hmm. uh, but here's my take. Um, one of the things that I also think that the West has over Africa, uh, Africa is that they have a more uniformed approach, right? Mm -hmm. Everything is within the vicinity, right? The, you know, the game engines, the distribution networks, the ad networks, you know, like the consumer market, you know, like access to like great infrastructure. We have seen a significant spike, right? You know, to, to Walid's point, back in 2009, it was near impossible to learn how to, to, to be, how to develop, how to build games. You know, I have met in the past couple of months, I have met people who have started game development in the last 12 months, right? And they've gone literally from zero to like really proficient within a very short space of time, right? Um, so I think that the easier access to information is definitely going to help. That is one starting point, right? So people can learn new skills, people can apply those skills, right? So that's number one, talent skills. The second is around access to markets, right? And that is extremely important. Now, I can't, you know, I don't have a crystal ball, so I can't for sure say how that is going to play out, but I think that is going to be critical, right? So, you know, whether it is a Pan-African distribution platform or a, you know, like a global platform that is really focused. So we're seeing moves, you know, from Apple, We've been seeing moves from Google for a very long time, you know, Unity, um, you know, Unreal. So we, we're seeing the major players turn up, right, to have a conversation. But action is key, right? Being able to get this great content available to people, accessible to people, you know, in front of people. If you go, if you go to the subways in San Francisco, you go to the subways in London, right? you would see billboards of games, right? Direct advertising, right? Now, that is somewhere that we need to get to at some point where we can actually, you know, like this, these are consumer products, right? The same way that people are advertised, you know, like a bottle of soda or people are advertised, you know, like a, uh, a sports betting platform. You know, people should also be shown, you know, a casual cultural game, right? that they can consume if they have data, right? And, and of course, the game has to be of good quality, but you also need to have a provider who is able to push that content to the end users, right? So I think like that's gonna be, that those two things, right? In terms of skills and access to market, that is what is going to change. In terms of the, you know, like our stories are diverse. Our stories are rich. Our stories have a great degree of depth, right? You know, we have our ancient history. We have our modern history, you know, and, you know, so, so in terms of like the narrative or the, the, the content, I don't think that that is where the challenge is going to come from. I think the challenge would be that do we have skilled people or do we have enough skilled people who are, motivated enough and incentivized enough to create content, right? That, you know, Walid rightly pointed out, there is an, a great appetite for. Amazing. Uh, Aram, let, let, me, let me come back to you for a second. I, I think we've touched on a couple of very key points here. And, and uh, in terms of the future, I, I believe one of the things that's very important is, you know, when you're looking at the panel, all, all, all three of you, you know, I, I'm, I'm just a supporter, but um, when you look at it, uh, all of the industry players locally uh, can have the skills and can have the talent and can master, uh, you know, everything needed to get to that level. But for today, we're seeing that a lot of the big players are looking at the continents. What would be your advice or what would be your look on how a potential investor that's probably today listening into us or a potential partner or one of those huge companies that would want to do something around video game in Africa, how should they go uh, about the local industry players? 
Yes, uh, that's a really great question. And um, that crafts the future. And uh, I think that falls also in the vision of the reason why we have the African Game Developers Association. That all, all this falls within us coming together as an association and streamlining how things have to happen on the continent in terms of all the experiences. Because if you are an investor coming to Africa, Africa is made up of a lot of countries with different <laughs> cultures, trust me. Mm. I've been to Tunisia, Morocco, that is not Ghana. Mm. You go to Egypt, it's not Ghana. You go to Kenya, they have winter. Ghana, Nigeria, we are in Hamatan, right? <laughs> and South Africa is not Africa. I was in South Africa, I'm like, you guys have this airport, you guys have this. <laughs> so Africa is extremely diverse. So an investor comes, so I've invested in a game company in South Africa. South Africa? That is Europe, man, right? <laughs> so, 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 so what I just want to say is Africa, the sub-Saharan Africa is where the masses is right it's, it's it's where we need to unlock like once we unlock the sub region to me like the north and south would automatically make their billions first because they are making the billion in europe jumping over us but once we, they, we unlock sub region walid will be um Elon Musk. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so why, why are you talking in the future? You already is, you know. <laughs> I Big boss. Ten times because a billion people. So, so, so the secret is what the association is trying to lay out. The data, like we have a lot of data. Um, Hugo has a lot of data, and and you know, like I have a timeline of all my fellow companies like Hugo, I know it's said uh, 2012, I know they did Splash Games, I know the challenge, I know Kuluya started here, didn't make it, I know well, like Wali, like we all have data of each other, right, Olivia, we, and we all are doing business one way or the other, how much I charge for, for, uh, for games might not be the same as what Hugo charges or while you charge it, the association would standardize these things, right? We will share data, standardize stuff in terms of um, like entrepreneurship, right? If someone wants to start a game company, the guidance will be there. We are going to help them streamline stuff and do things. And telcos, telcos, I see telcos now becoming the distributor because they are willing to now partner people on the ground, right? I'm working with MTN, um, um, Olivier is working with MTN as well in Cameroon. They like, I know Walid may have some ties with them as well. He go, so there are different things. Orange is doing a lot in terms of that. So in the future, all these telcos are going to bring along their infrastructure. And we, the game companies with experience are going to bring all our data, all our experience and like for us, we have an internal game engine. I'm sure by now, Walid also has an internal game engine to replicate some of their stuff, right? Like we have, we know what works on the continent. So if someone like Unity, um, 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 Unreal, they are all trying to come onto the continent and they are working with us. Some of us are working with Epic, Unity, trying to see <clears throat> how best to broaden the community, um, the big companies, MTN and the rest are, are also trying to organize game conferences to see the geeks on the continent and bring them together to craft this industry. At least they realize that our audience are weird, are unique. Like, you know, there's this weird weirdness in terms of game consumers, right? So we all have to gather. Like how back in 97 or 99, that's when I joined IGDA, right? And I started learning from the Gamma Sutra and all those things. I've joined them for, for a long time. We will provide that sort of thing to for the audience, right? For our African audience. Today, I got my first assignment submission from a course I started teaching in a university. I started teaching game design 
in a university, which is an online course, game development course. And I got my first student sent the assignment. I was so happy. I'm like, wow, someone has actually learned my game design video tutorials and done the assignment. So these are some of the things that are going to surface. Education, content, skill, build skill to create more stuff, create more companies. And then the association is also going to bring us together to standardize things on the continent. So that's how I see things going. And investors coming in will have to join the association to actually see how to make things work on the continent. Mm -hmm. Impressive, impressive, guys. Uh, well, you know, unfortunately, the the, the time is running, you know, is running uh, away. But uh, I want us to go around the table one more time, and uh, I want to know if you guys have one thing to say to wrap up. Uh, this conversation that we had around the emergence of video game industry in Africa. Let, let me start with, with with you, Walid, and then we'll go to you. Go. Uh, yeah, I mean the the the, the path is still uh, is still very very long, huh? but we are uh, every long journey starts with a small step, and we are uh, definitely doing one hundred every day. So which is which is amazing. I'm very glad that this community is starting to 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 gather and and to be all. You thinking in the same way on how to th- and how to work in a good synergy all together. Um, I believe that the next challenge uh, uh, will be educating, educating on three levels. The first one, of course, skills, and this is very important. We 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 have a lot of young people, very a lot of creative people, and not only in hard skills. I also believe that soft skills are very important. You know, uh, uh, general culture, uh, history, geography, how to tell stories, music, all this kind of things is very important to create a nice game. The second thing is actually educating also our governments and our, the, our ecosystems about the importance of our markets. Until now, a lot of people think that what we are doing, games, toys, actually for kids. And this is everybody who are sharing this, uh, uh, especially in countries like ours. And the third aspect is educating the local investors. Foreign investors is okay. It's fine. They will come if they see the money, if they see the opportunity. But we have local investors in all the countries and they need to understand that investing in uh, real estate is, is has been, is something from, from the, uh, the last century. Now we need to invest in this type uh, of, of industries and this type of products uh, if they really want to get to, to get rich because an, an investor just want to, to have... Uh, uh, return over his investment and uh, definitely this can be a nice uh, thing for them so education 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 and advocacy this is our uh, our burden and in the same time our mission <laughs> <laughs> nice thank you very much i appreciate it hugo what is your last word on this yeah so so i i think i i'm very optimistic about about the future for for gaming in africa i i like i think you know, a lot of these are like learned behaviors, right? It's 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 not easy, but there is a process, right? And it's a gradual step, right? It's repetition, it's repetition, it's perfection, you know, like. But once we once we sort that out, right? The next step is actually building content that people want to enjoy, that people want to consume, right? That is key. Like there has to be a focus on the products that are designed and developed, whether those products are for businesses or for direct consumers, right? So, I, I mean, like, again, with the people that I talk to, the people that I, I, that I encounter, right, there, there is that awareness of that system. And then once we get that part right, you know, the next piece of the puzzle is the distribution. So whether that is telcos, whether that is OEMs, what are those are the, the you know like the, the distribution platforms you know that because i don't think that any one person has the capacity to learn to create and then to you know to distribute and then to monetize you know it's it's a lot of work it's a lot of you know silos or verticals right so the partnership and the collaboration is extremely vital right to enable us achieve this so, you know, for me, the word is to the distributors, to the OEMs, to the telcos, you know, please look for ways to support, right? You have the platform, help the developers get their content 
to the end consumers. Nice. Aram, you have 30 seconds. <laughs> I think they've said it all. And uh, for me, I'll just say that the game industry is the only industry that enables all other industries. It's a field that brings together all skill sets. Arts, science, story writers, graphic designers, programmers together. And it's the only industry to make a salient contribution to Africa's GDP. So let's embrace it at all levels and let's help unlock this puzzle to make the gaming industry bigger than the movie and the music industry combined as it is in the West. Let's make it bigger in Africa. So those are my last words. Wow. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. I really enjoyed the conversation. This was really great. I heard passion. I heard dedication. I heard vision. And I think, you know, this is just something very important to the youth. You guys, some of you guys have been in the industry for 10 to 15 years. And, you know, I commend you for that. And, and, and really, you know, let's, let's all look at it. I think the future is bright. Africa definitely has a lot of potential. And the video game industry will definitely be uh, something key that countries uh, in our continent are going to have to you know are uh, going to use as a way to create jobs and as a way to create wealth uh thank you guys again for the time thanks for everyone who is listening in uh we'll definitely be in touch and uh, you know thanks to everybody for for listening in all right take care guys yeah bye, -bye. <laughs>